The photos from the Event Horizon Telescope are changing our conception of supermassive black holes. Sagittarius A prime is engulfed by a storm in space, a plasma storm. There will be enormous amounts of wind circulation. Everything is orbiting around the black hole at very, very high speeds. Like a hurricane hunter, EHT astronomer Dimitrios Saltis imagines a flight through the turbulence. And the speed of the wind will get faster and faster and faster as I go closer to the horizon. Actually, when I hit the horizon, the speed of that wind will be very similar to the speed of light. So we're talking about really, really large velocities. Not only is there going to be a lot of wind, but that wind will not be nice and smooth. So it will become more and more and more turbulent as I get closer to the black hole. Some distance from the inner edge of the storm, Demetrios approaches the event horizon. It is not a hard detectable surface, but rather an invisible, unmarked boundary. A black hole has a horizon in the sense that space looks the same as you approach it. And if you get too close, there's no magic warning bell that goes off when you get into it. You would just glide over it, just as you would glide over the horizon on the ocean. There's nothing special that happens, except you're inside. You say, well, that's fun. Let's go turn around and get back. Can't do it. You're gone. Hidden inside the event horizon is an object so small it has no height, width, or depth. Yet it retains all of the gravitational power of every object it ever captured. They call it the singularity. While the gargantuan scale of an event horizon grabs the headlines, it's the singularity that holds all the mysteries. One word describes the defining characteristic of a singularity, compaction. Consider the compaction needed to make a black hole like Sagittarius A. This is a vintage 1969 Corvette Stingray. We've just seen one of our experts drive this car into a black hole. It has the weight of most average cars, one and a half metric tons. Crush it down until it can't be compacted any further. It is now much smaller than it was before, but the car still weighs the same. Squeeze it again until all of its parts, the fenders, the engine, the wheels, all of it, are so compacted, so small, this paramecium could eat it. Now, crush another car, and another. Repeat this process until every car on our planet has been squeezed into this single microscopic particle. Although it takes up a lot less space, this particle still has the full weight of every automobile in the world, all 1.4 billion of them. That's every Ford, Subaru, Toyota, Tesla, you name it, including every Corvette on the planet, now crushed inside. And we're not finished. What about houses, buildings, and cities? Add them to the particle. Add the mountains and the oceans and the air. Squeeze the whole world into the space of this single particle that began with the Corvette. It now weighs six billion trillion metric tons. And still, it's not heavy enough. Cram the moon in there, and Mars too. Squash every planet in the solar system. Still not enough. There's only one thing left. Time to crush the sun. Finally, it's all there. The entire solar system, including the Earth and the sun, all inside a microscopic particle. But microscopic is still too big. 
To become a black hole, this particle must be squeezed further down into the realm of the subatomic, smaller than atoms. In 1899, the German physicist Max Planck proposed a boundary for the smallest size an object can be. This theoretical boundary is called the Planck length. Nothing can be smaller than a Planck length. It's so small, even a single proton in the heart of an atom is about 100 million trillion times larger than one Planck length. Are the singularities inside black holes this small? What happens to matter crushed down to this level is completely unknown. Here, the laws of quantum physics that govern the tiniest, most fundamental building blocks of nature crash into Einstein's general relativity, which addresses the physics of the very large. Black holes are so efficient at keeping their secrets we will never know if the singularity ever shrinks to the Planck length or beyond. General relativity, which is Einstein's brilliant creation, you know, which is a theory from which black holes you know, were predicted, describes what happens as you go in, but not at the very center. At the very center, you're divided by zero, as it were. You, know, you, you can picture like a function that gets steeper and steeper and steeper as you approach zero and then goes to infinity. Well, the formal physics would say it goes to infinity, but that just means we don't know what happens there. Something else has to happen at the smallest radii. But the things we can see and have now photographed, the ring of light and the shadow of the black hole in the heart of our galaxy, not only expands our understanding of our place in the cosmos, but demonstrates the power of the creative, inquisitive human mind to probe and learn. We are explorers and we want to know our place in the universe and we want to know what the Earth is and what its past was and uh, every other bizarre thing that's happening in the universe around us. So I think whether or not humans realize it. We are born to be scientists, um, and we are born to try to understand the world around us. And I'm lucky enough that I get to do that. For others, it's the thrill of the chase. The seeing, the measuring, and the questions. Always the questions that pull them forward 